All right, giddy, hi, and welcome. There's my beautiful Mapex drums. And I'm doing some recording. Uh, it's be like the second or third time I recorded with this. Uh, it's taking me a lot longer than I wanted to, um, you know, because I have to record at opportune moments. Uh, I don't, I can't just record what I want because there's you know, other people in the house and stuff like that. But uh, this machine's quite a, quite interesting. So I got the two mics there. We'll get back to the BR-1200 in a second. Uh, I got my SM57 at the worst uh, mic setup. Is also another worst mic setup. Uh, I don't know what the abbreviation is, but basically the sim the simplicity of it is you aim everything towards the snare or your crotch, so to speak. And I found that the SM57 from in this, I mean room no treatment, whatever, records better here than it does over here just because uh you get a little bit more snap off the the kick drum that way over here just kind of more a little bit too muddy uh this has an overhead the sm58 is okay for an overhead not the best mic uh the sm58 is a very legendary mic and i already talked about it and stuff like that but it is it does have a lot of limitations uh, the sm57 i think is a better budget mic than the sm58 in a lot of ways it's just most people have the sm58 for live playing but if i were to uh, do it over again just from a recording point of view i would just go with two sm57s uh for the overhead um the sm57 records nice and quiet like it is really a good money for a uh, good mic for the money it really is for recording like, if you don't know where to start, that's where you start. And there's no other budget mic, really, that's going to be better than it. Uh, there's no other budget mic that's really in its price range that's really going to be much worse than it. Uh, but it's a good mic overall. I mean, people have recorded incredible uh, stuff with SM57s. Uh, so, you know, is it all you need? Maybe not, but uh, if you're on a budget, yeah. But if you're going to, if you're wondering which which is the better of the two to get, definitely the SM, because uh, you get way less uh, mic bleed in the SM57, and it's not as uh, distant, uh, um, sensitive as the SM58, but the SM58 is better for live. I wouldn't use the SM57 as a vocal mic live or like that. But anyway, let's get back to what I got going on here. So I'm about to put down the guitar track. So the track's a lot shorter than I thought it was going to be. Um, there's two, sort of three verses in it. Um, and then just a bunch of choruses. Choruses. And uh, that's my 278th track that I've recorded on this thing. Uh, two minutes, 15 seconds of me beating the crap out of the drums. Now, the cool thing about this, even though this is two, 2006 technology, yeah, it's, it's, it's um, you know, a bit dated, but you do have compressor, EQ, reverb, chorus, delay, yeah, you can pan, you've got, you've got everything you can, you can actually take the acoustic drums and make them not sound too, too bad. Uh, this is not a multi-million dollar studio, but, uh, you know, and you're not going to get that, but basically I got two mics that I can record with at the same time. And I did. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these out. I know you shouldn't do it with the thing on, but I do it anyway. Uh, now I'm going to just hook up my guitar. I'm going to record this song with the SG. The song's called Follow the Lost, but, uh, I didn't, because of my issues with, where are you? My metronome hiding way over there. Uh, I can't hear it while I'm playing with the headphones on. Uh, I know some people have uh, recommended the Vic Firth uh, isolation headphones. I'm probably going to go, I forget what they're called, but they're the, these ones you can buy parts for them and everything like that. They're really, really cool. They're almost like 300 bucks, but they cut out something like uh, 29 decibels off the snare and I think something like 39 decibels off the, the, the rest of the drums, which is perfect because then I'd be able to hear the click uh in in the headphones while i'm playing so i just try to keep time the best i could came out how it came out so it's going to be a little more old-fashioned it's going to be very very 1982 for the drum quality uh in the sense of uh you know like probably not most of those guys ba back then probably didn't play with a metronome and stuff like that they probably just had to do like five gazillion takes until they got it perfect um 
but maybe uh, if they had like a little strobe, they could play along with a strobe. But I'm thinking a strobe might be a better way to go. Uh, except for you have to keep your eyes on it. You can't look at your drum kit. But the, the drum kit's kind of intuitive anyway. Uh, so it's kind of like you can sort of play, play it blindfolded and still... The, the objects are big enough you're going to hit pretty much where you want to hit anyway. So yeah. So maybe maybe some sort of a strobe uh, timing uh, device would be better. I, I don't know. You guys tell me uh, if you've tried that route before. But the isolation headphones I want to get anyway, especially like when it comes to the vocals. The vocals is the thing that I have the hardest time in here because we have no treatment in the room, stuff like that. That is, when you're a multi-instrumentalist like I am, uh, your your focus gets a little bit crazy. Obviously, I got a little bit crazy with the guitars in the last past couple of years, but I think that was a common theme amongst guitar players uh, the last past couple of years. Like, yeah, I just need this. Why do I need this? I don't know. I just need it. It's pretty. Um, yeah, so like room treatment is definitely going to be something that I have to do with the drums. You know, I, I don't know how I'm going to do it, um, but I'm going to do it. Uh, but for now, work with what you got, right? And what I'm going to do is put down the guitar track next. There's going to be, this is obviously going to be like a... It's not going to be speed metal, obviously, because I'm not a speed metal drummer. I'm not good enough to be a speed metal drummer yet. Uh, but it's definitely going to be a metal song. Um, there's also going to be some, if I can pull it off, I, I, I've got, okay, 12 tracks here. The track, uh, you know, uh, 11 and 12 are basically the bounce track. So you can't record on the bounce track. It's just, it's not, it's not available. So really, it's like having 10 tracks but the drum track is two tracks in one so you don't have a second fader here you only really have one fader but you can digitally go in there and play around with the faders if you really wanted to but for the drums you're usually going to keep the faders the same right and then everything else is just uh like for example seven and eight uh six or one and two three and four five and six seven and eight are you know you, you know pan left pan right you, you i mean you can use them as individual tracks if you want but there's another neat feature that i have never used on this and even though this is a 12 tr track uh, recording apparatus it basically has 192 virtual tracks that you can double up on. You can basically put 192 tracks on track one if you want. Uh, the downside is you have to get everything recorded, the volumes and everything perfect the first shot because you can't, you can't separate. Uh, you know what I mean? Like whereas if say like track two and one and two are a little bit too loud for uh, whatever than uh, three and four. Well, you can play around with the faders here and, you know, bring, okay, whatever, bring that up a bit. Okay, okay, that's there. Okay, well, maybe I'll bring that down a bit. Okay, that's too much. Maybe I'll bring that one down and I'll bring this up a bit. I can do that, but I can't do that with the, the virtual track so I can record them, but I have to record them at the perfect volume setting or else uh, I can't go back and, you know, I can't play around with them after. So it's kind of like you get those 192, but you have to get the, the, the end product perfect because you can't, you can't alter it after. And the other problem with that is that you have to really take your time with it because uh, if you don't, what happens is when you go to do the, the, the mastering, which yes, you can master and do speaker uh, emulation on this, this thing's like a full studio. It's 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 like a full studio. Anything you can go in a multi million dollar studio, and every feature that they can pretty much do, you could pretty much do on this. Uh, but it's just it does it on a budget, right? Uh, the drums can be tracked if they're digital, but the, I can't track the uh, analog drums unfortunately. So again, I just got to go with how best I can keep time. But anyway, that's what I got to work with. So there's going to be uh, some uh, little surprises in this song as well, such as uh, fiddles and stuff like that. And I'm going to try to get a lot of vocal work in there. Uh, so it's going to take me a little longer to record this song than I, than I thought. But, uh, you know, put in the effort, right? Get a good product. Because I, I tend to half-ass my songs that I record. So, uh, you know, now that I got everything I need, no more of that. Oh, plus there's the bass over there. So, uh, so today I got the drums down. If I get the drums, all the guitars down. And the bass, I will be a happy camper. And then it's just vocals and the fiddle. And that's it. Yeah, there we go. So that's how I'm recording right now.